Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I actually started the introduction and it was muted, as it always is. Uh, welcome to this fantastic event uh, hosted by uh, Digital Labs, uh, the state of PWAs. Today, we have a fantastic discussion that me and, my, and the panelists are going to have. And we're also going to open, uh, be open to questions from yourself. So if you have anything specific you would like to answer, ask, uh, please um, write it in the chat, in the YouTube chat and we will pick up um, some of the questions at random and we'll try to answer all the questions that we can. We, before we move on, before I introduce the panelists, before we actually start with the next things, I'm going to say thank you to, that, to our host. Um, a little bit about this Doll Labs. This Doll Labs proudly partners with enterprise interests in transforming their digital assets, upskilling their teams, and finding novel avenues for advanced integrations. Um, if you're interested in seeing some of the work we've done, you can actually go on uh, our website on this.co forward slash portfolio. We work with many, uh, many companies and uh, I've been part of the digital labs for the last uh, two years, three years plus. And it's been a fantastic experience. And if you do want to actually have a change, you want to actually come and join and work with us, uh, we are actually um, open. We do. We are actually hiring a software engineer and DevOps. So just go on our site and click on the jobs or actually send an email to jobs at this .co, as shown at the bottom of the screen. Um, next one up is another project uh, it's called a framework to dev. So framework to dev is a place to search for top web technologies, compare key feature and discover communities, community curated resources to help you learn. Um, in this slide, it actually shows Angular React in view. But we're currently working on adding more. So we're adding Stealth Kit, we're adding SolidJS, and we're also adding Quick uh, on this. So it's open source, everyone can contribute. So feel free to join, um, join the community for that. And lastly, I would like to share all the upcoming events that Digital Labs actually has. So we have the State of Angular Ecosystem next week on November the 15th. Then we go Women, Women in Tech monthly mentoring. Um, then we go React mentoring on the 17th. New mentoring on December the 7th, state of accessibility on December the 13th, and lastly but not least, women in tech again monthly mentoring on December the 14th. So these are the last few events before the, the, the year. But you know, keep keep tuned on this dom on the digital labs uh, Twitter and digital media Twitter under because there's always more coming. And I think it's time to actually introduce the panelists. There's one more slide, introducing ourselves. Um, I am Simone Cuomo, software architect at Digital Labs. Uh, you can find me at Zelig880. And today with me, I have my co-host, that is Jerry Hogan. Hi, Jerry. Is that? Is that? Uh, that, that is a software engineer at Digital Labs. Uh, you can also find me, um, I am Jerry underscore Hogan. But you guys are not here for us, okay? You guys are actually here for uh, the amazing panelists that we have. And let's introduce them one at a time. First one is uh, Max, uh, Maximiliano Fertman. Hi, Max. Thank you for being here. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. Ready for the, ready for the discussions. Next one up yeah. is Justin Willis. Hey, everyone. Very excited about today. Um, Amazing. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome discussion, I think. Let's hope so. And next one, we have Danny. I'm yes. not, not going to say your surname. Oh, that's okay. It's Moordkerke, but you'll be forgiven for uh, <laughs> having trouble pronouncing that. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a freelance uh, web developer. I'm also the creator of uh, What PWA Can Do Today, which is a collection of demos of what is possible uh, currently with, uh, with progressive web apps. Amazing. Thank you so much. Luckily, I didn't try to get your surname. I, had, I, I was <laughs> trying to. I was like, I'll oh, better not. That was a don't, very good Don't choice. bother. No, 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 Dan is good. And next one, we, we still got more. We got Adriana. Hi, I'm Adriana Hara, and I've been working as a developer relations engineer for PWA and Workbox on Chrome. And I am super excited to be here and to tell you what's the state of PWA is. It's amazing. And then we go last but not least with Kenneth. Hi, I'm Kenneth. I work at Intel. We're working on a web platform engineering team. Uh, I'm one of the co-authors of Where's the Web Apps and working on a lot of different exciting new APIs coming to the web. So looking much forward to this discussion today. Welcome, everyone. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. So I'm going to take the slides away and I'm going to just show our 
beautiful faces. Where is everyone's face? Yeah, here we are. Just showing our beautiful faces. You guys can unmute yourself so that we can have a discussion and we were not going to say anymore. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, that is very common. Uh, and um, let's go. So where do we start? Um, first and foremost, again, we, we, we say hi to all the live viewers. I can see the, the number counting and feel free to add more questions. But where do we start? So um, let's see, let's see. Um, where will question? So let's start from the beginning, OK? We know that some of our viewers are actually know about PWA. They're well advanced. They probably have tried already. They already think about the truth to be told is let's have a run through and say, where do you think PWA stands today? So where are we? If you would have to explain to someone, hey, you should use PWA, what do you think is the state of PWA? Is it advanced? Is it, things, is it growing? So just let's have a chat about the actual state of today's time with the PWA. Probably we progress over time. Um, and this can either be, um, if you would suggest it as an, um, um, a, um, you know, changing it like you know tell people hey stop and remove that native app and actually work pwa or if you just suggest it to a small portion of the market so anyone who wants to take this this go at explaining pwa yeah, yeah. I, I, I can give it a try uh, <laughs> so um first of all like progressive web app is a brand name just like when we used to have html5 it was like pushing the web forward and and today if you look at it technically uh, some people say that PWA is the manifest that allows you to make these apps that are installable. Um, there's also something about using a service worker, which might become optional in the future. We might hear about that later today and, and some other technologies. But, but really, it's about using the web to create native-like experiences that can be installed. And we're actually pretty, doing pretty well today. Uh, we have the ability to, to install these apps and, and they can launch and look like native. They even have like this jump list on Windows or long, long press on Android. We have like these shortcuts. Um, you can share to a progressive web app. So if you install Twitter as a progressive web app, I can actually from another app share a picture, for instance, from Google Photos. So like you can do a lot of those things you can do with native apps. Mm. And we keep on expanding those capabilities and try to meet developers where, where they are and, and offer them the capabilities that they need. So I think we're doing really well. Uh, there's always things to do. Uh, of course, like native doesn't stand still either, so we just have to do better and better. Uh, but I would say we're doing really great, and um, we are all working on making it even better. Uh, yeah, just I'll that. add that. Go ahead, Audrey. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it, it tends to be like a confusing term because I think like it's been there for a while, mm -hmm. and we are landing on, you know, PWA is just the technology that allows you to improve your web experiences, to make them more app-like, to make, make them more appy. And it's more about how your users perceive your web app. So mm -hmm. if you have a weather app and it's really awesome and you can share it with your friends and like you can post uh, cold, llamas on Twitter, then it is a great um, PWA. If you have a very advanced app like Photoshop, but it is not installable, you use it as an app. It gives you the features that you want. It is a PWA. So we're focusing a little bit less on like what you need to be a PWA and like just use this great set of technologies mm. to make yeah, absolutely. Better. Yeah, I think that's a very good point because uh, I think still a lot of just websites that are not even PWAs uh, are just leaving that stuff on the table. I mean, there are mm -hmm. so many websites that are still not using service workers. Uh, the other day I was in the city of Amsterdam. I had to get some shoes. So I was looking for a, a certain shop. Uh, I wanted to find their nearest location. And then I was in the center of the city. And what I have to do is if I have to type in my zip code to find directions and I have no idea. I was just somewhere in the center. And, you know, those websites, they, they should use geolocation for that, uh, that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very good point. Even if you don't have a PWA, please uh, use all those modern features because they are still underused. Justin, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, it's all good. Um, for me, I always like to describe progressive web apps as like it brings to, together like the best of the web and the best of the native side of things, right? 
So for me, it's not like a native or PWA type thing. It's just that if you want, so if you're looking basically for like reach, so progressive web apps are, you know, just like any other web app, right? Or website for that matter. So it's just a URL that, you know, I could like share to everyone on the call and we could all jump on the same app and just get like, just straight into the experience, right? So it's not something you have to install or something like that. But we also know that a lot of users tend to, like when they're looking for an application or looking for, you know, a tool that they need to do something, they're going to go to an app store, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Or they may go into an app store. And the cool thing about progressive web apps, especially in the last couple of years, is that they can also be in the web store or, you know, in in app stores, right? So like Google Play, the Microsoft store, as we'll probably talk about. Um, But it's still just a, a web app at the end of the day. Now, just a web app, as like Kenneth and Adriana mentioned, like there's a lot you can do to make those like real applications. Um, but it's 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 really more about like bringing the best of the web into kind of like the app space um, for me, at least. I, I just wanted to talk about the, the branding once more, because uh, you might say that this is basically just the web today. It's the modern web. Uh, but there is, uh, th- there's a reason why we use the branding PWA or progressive web apps. And it's the same as when we used to have the web and we had HTML5. It is that there's a lot of people out there like product managers and managers. And if they just hear like, they, they when we had like HTML5, it's like, well, the web didn't make it. And now there's something new called HTML5. That's a modern web. So today it is kind of the same. Uh, now the modern web, because you talk to to company owners and, and product managers and they're like, well, mm-hmm. the web didn't really make it. We can't. You can't really do that on the web. Said, yes, you can with the modern yeah, yeah. web, and we call yeah, it progressive yeah, yeah. web apps. So yeah. having that brand yeah. is quite powerful. Yeah. Uh, Max, any yeah. more on just to go no, down? No, uh, I mean I agree with everything that, that you said, folks. But um, I typically say that the PWA is like the current DNA of the web. So it's just the web. So every time you see a QR code out there, most of the time you are using a PWA, even if the author of that website doesn't really even know what a PWA is. So that's the, the nice part of this. So having said that, so everything on the web, every link you see, it's kind of under the PWA umbrella, even if it's not still adding some of the, the features. And that leads leads to the um, to that situation that I think that we have. There is a there is a still a huge opportunity to increase the user experience mm. on probably 99% of the websites and web apps out there. So there is still a lot of work to do. So they can just sometimes just by adding a couple of lines, just by adding a service worker, just by adding a JSON file, that's the manifest file. Mm. Just adding that, you will increase a lot of uh, the experience of your users. So I think that um, there is still a lot of opportunity. So yeah. It's becoming invisible, I think, at some point. So users mm-hmm. don't care about PWAs, and maybe that's okay. So uh, from a user's perspective, right? So it's like I just want to, like, I don't know, unlock this bike in my city. I just want to buy something. I don't care how or which technology I'm using, right? Um, so for us, for web developers, yeah, it's like a set of, of best practices, design patterns to actually create an app-like experience using the web platform. So I think it's becoming invisible to the user, and maybe that's not bad. And uh, But from our side, from the community, so sometimes we, every, everyone that is here in this in this virtual room, we are kind of really in PWA, so we think mm-hmm. that uh, everyone is, used, is creating PWAs. But when you get out to talk to businesses, Sometimes, even with other web developers, there are still a lot of web developers that need to understand yeah. these new capabilities, mm-hmm. uh, these new ideas that you, you can apply, yeah. even even service workers. So I do trainings some workshops and, and, and talks all over the world. Sometimes there are a lot of web developers that are still surprised today about the power that a service worker can bring to the web. Yeah. So there are still yeah. work yeah. to do on that side. Yeah, man. And you guys covered the very um, a, a wide range of what PWA can actually do. So many people, if you go around, people that don't know PWA, you say, hey, do you know what is PWA? They probably say, oh, make the site work offline. That's the only thing they'll say. Yeah, the only yeah. thing they probably know is, oh, it's still the app. Uh, you know, adding, having a pop-up to install my app, but I, I go Apple, so it doesn't work. They have no idea that in reality, PWA is not just that anymore. So thank you to you, Danny, the what PWA, what PWA can do 
uh, site. It's amazing. It's the one that Thank I always share to you. people. I share it to people say, guys, really? You're still at the, the just go on that site and see really yeah. what you can do. Th- you mentioned you. the geofence, so the payment gateway, the the, you, there's so much more that's coming to the API. So yeah, yeah. yeah well done. I'm working on, uh, on 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 expanding the demos uh, as well. Just adding some more demos, and I also get a lot of questions for people to uh, to open source it. So I will open source it soon. Amazing. Uh, the problem right now is that it's too integrated with some backend code, and I want people to you know when they download it, I want people to be able to run it end to end on their local machine. So. Uh, uh, yeah, but it, it's it's good. I still get a lot of questions uh, and and emails from that. From mm-hmm. people are really surprised. Oh, I didn't know that you could do that with a with a PWA. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like like Max uh, mentioned, there's still a lot of learning uh, to do and teaching by people like us to make people aware of of what is possible with uh, with PWAs. And and another part as well, when some, I don't remember who mentioned that the service worker is more than can do way more than we believe. Uh, I was yep. in training last a couple of weeks ago about the Quick framework. I don't know if you heard of it. It's a new framework. And the way the Quick framework has actually been built, it uses service worker behind the scene to do the, all the hydration. So all the speed of that framework is thanks to the service worker. So it doesn't use any offline. And it's, so again, it shows where the technology is there to go above and beyond what we can do nowadays on the web. So yep. good start. Good start. Nice. Um, let me see. So um, uh, let's move on to the next question. So we introduce what PWA is, okay? And I think it's good enough now to actually tell our users and actually check. I say, what are the latest tools and resources available to help new developers to get started? So um, again, around the room, who wants to go first? Uh, there's no hands up in uh, in, in the tool we're using today. So put the finger up. And, uh, I'll volunteer just, as tribute. We can blink an eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah so this is this is a, a topic that um i am thinking about every day right so i work at microsoft um specifically on the P- pwa builder team um so pwa builder you may know it from like pwbuilder.com um it's a tool that's been around for um since the windows like 8.1 days actually um but yeah it's mainly always been focused on like uh, getting getting your um, PWAs into the app stores. So uh, the Microsoft Store only back in the day, but now we support the Microsoft Store, Google Play, um, other Android stores, um, MetaQuest devices, all this kind of stuff. But really, we're expanding beyond uh, PWA.com to become more of like a developer platform for PWAs, right? So we're really, um, so for example, we have our VS Code extension now, which is PWA Builder Studio, Um, It brings all of the kind of like all the stuff you would need to like make a PWA. So all the kind of like technical um, intricacies, like icon sizes and do you have the right fields in your manifest and like uh, generating a service worker, all the stuff that is kind of easy to get wrong and kind of hard to do correctly. And what we try to do is wrap up all the best practices and basically give you something that instead of like researching uh, you know, what size icons you need and finding some tool to generate them. You just hit a few buttons and boom, we do it for you. Um, and along with that too, we have like our PWA starter project, which is an app template that gives you, you literally start it straight from GitHub or our VS Code extension if you want. And that gives you a PWA that's ready to start um, using kind of the best practices that our team has figured out from talking to partners and the community. Um, so yeah, if you just go to pwabuilder.com, you can, um, on our homepage, there's links to kind of all of our tooling. And, uh, you know, if you're just starting off with building a PWA, it'll, it'll lead you there. If you are looking for more tooling or something, it'll lead you to the right places. But, um, yeah, I, I'm very excited about it. It's something that, like I said, we, we're, we're working on it consistently. Um, our team is growing. Um, and, yeah, it's really about making developers, making it easy for developers to build great PWAs and then ship those great progressive web apps to the app stores, along with the web, obviously, too. Yeah, yep, great. Thank you. Next one up with the thing. Next one up. <laughs> um, so from my side, to get started, we have uh, this course that actually Maximiliano helped write, and so the both of us <laughs> put it together. And it's a web.dev slash learn slash PWA. 
And it's a very extensive course and it goes through like the very, very beginning. What are the concepts of these technologies? How to give users a good install experience? What tools are out there to help you, for example, deal with service workers? Like it talks about Wordbox, that it's also another set of libraries that it's used to encapsulate the complexity of service workers and bring it to another level. And then it goes through the list of capabilities and you can go from there to whatever use case fits your app because this is why it is complicated to get started with PWA. It's like you have to first think about what your use case, if it is like a shopping app, if it is a um, game, if it is a playlist in audio playing uh, app like Justin's <laughs> app, there are different capabilities that you can use. But in this course, we have like this um, set of capabilities that you can use depending on your specific app. And by the way, that's free. Yes. That's important. Cool. So that yeah. course is free. So you can oh. go to <laughs> web.dev, learn PWA. And you have also some um, live samples that you can try on your phone. So there are some code that you can see and try on, on every technology. So um, have in mind that to get started with PWA first, you need to be a web developer or a web designer or a web producer, however you want to call yourself. You need to work on the web. So we are, we are that, that's the web. So you need to know about responsive design, about web performance, all the best practices that, that we know on the web. And on top of that, you can understand these new capabilities that a website can have, including installation, offline support, and access to hardware, to uh, platform integration. So you can integrate with an operating system, being Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, or Chrome, Chrome OS. So um, all those things. I think that uh, there are a lot of material uh, that is free, available free, and free in, in in both sides, so free in terms of money and also free license. So that means that you can actually take that content and, and work with it and and even even create your own ideas on top of that. So um, th those are there are some resources uh, that you have. But first, it's important to like be a web developer. And it's not something different. So I, I, I want to make sure that everyone understands that it's not like, oh, I'm, am I a web developer or a PWA developer? No, it's just the same. Mm. It's a web developer, right? So you're just understanding some new APIs and new capabilities available yeah. on sometimes all the browsers, sometimes most of the browsers, sometimes one browser. So it depends. But um, that's the idea. So uh, first, yeah. be, a, be a great web developer. And of course, there are a lot of resources on that. And then learn the that I, I want to say it's a thin layer. So after you're a good web developer, it's it's not like a very large layer that you need to learn. There's not like another year of learning for being a PWA developer. That's not yeah. the case. Okay, so I think mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a thin layer that you need to to invest time into learning. One one yeah. thing I wanted to add. Oh, just real quick. One thing I wanted to add to that I think is cool is that all the tools we've been talking about so far is so like what PWA can do today, Workbox, web.dev slash learn slash PWA, PWA Builder. It's funny that all of these tools end up like, so like PWA Builder makes use of Workbox. And we also like in our docs point to like um, web.dev uh, slash learn slash PWA in a bunch of places. I know that like web.dev also has links back out to PWA Builder for where it makes sense. Um, so just, uh, yeah, MDN, exactly. So just wanted to call yeah, it yeah. that. I think it's cool mm -hmm. that we all work at like different companies and some of us are freelance, et cetera, but all of our tools um, still kind of work together. I, th I think that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And as uh, Max said, if you need to be a web developer, but the cool thing is if you go to web.dev slash learn, you can actually learn to become a web developer. There's like resources on HTML, CSS, and all responsive yeah. design and all of these things that you might not yeah. know about yet. So. It's really my favorite website, the web.dev, because it has so much information. It's, it's really incredible. <laughs> yeah. Someone is happy on this call? Yeah, no, it is. It's, 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 a, it's a fantastic resource, absolutely. It is. We've been, we've been so kind with each other so far, so that's amazing. Let's keep, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Uh, yeah. Any more on this topic, guys, or shall we jump on the next question? 
No, may, maybe something something really small is that if you start today with most of the libraries and frameworks out there, React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, Next.js, mm -hmm. all these tools are, are, most of them, they have a way to quickly and easily like add PWA capabilities, mm -hmm. at least the basic ones. So uh, if you are on that side, like create, using one of those libraries, I think that those tools will help you with the beginning, okay? So sometimes the PWA that you get from there, it's probably not updated or you need to understand mm -hmm. more things, but it's a, it's a great start, okay? So yeah. if, you, if you are still playing with the web and you only know React, well, try to see how you can add a, a PWA capabilities to that React application yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. I think that, sorry, you go ahead, Danny. No, I, I, I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. No. Um, I just say um, that's, you know, as, as a developer, I think that's a, um, a good thing and a curse at the same time. So the good thing is that you start, you go, oh, look, you want to switch out, you know, PWA, just click PWA. You do PWA, that's it. All your, you know, all your uh, assets are already cached. Everything is done. It works offline. You think I've done it. But as soon as people then think, oh, I would like to, you know, I would like to now cache this specific endpoint for my GET API because it's a static one. Oh, wait a minute. Now you have to generate the service <laughs> work. You have to do this from scratch. And yeah. I think it's, you know, it's a both, you know, I think we, we get people, you know, lots of people use it, but then the, the learning curve to really get starting and standing is a bit trickier than I would say um, initially. So I, I'm happy about all these resources that we shared today because probably yeah. we're starting to remove that. There's uh, one I would still would like to add is uh, the PWA asset uh, generator, which is also a very nice tool because it can generate all your icons for you mm -hmm. and also gives you the uh, the correct links to put it inside your index HTML and your manifest.json. Uh, it's a small tool, but it's very helpful. But funny enough, the, the latest version of our VS Code extension on the Peter Butter team actually uses the another like tools using each other. So ah, we okay. actually cool. use the yeah. asset generator yeah, to like do the icon generation stuff that I was talking about. So, and yep, it also yep. like puts the links into your index.html, into your manifest, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's, yep, it's yep. a really cool tool. Yeah, I, I, really would cool. So, I would so love people that do work on icons to actually look at the the full, the maskable icons, because yep. if you want the icon to look good on, for instance, on Android, uh, that would be quite useful. And I would assume that in the future we get the monochrome. Uh, Icons uh, as well because on, <clears throat> on on my Android phone at least on, on the latest version you can do like themable icons and that yeah. will use that feature. So so don't just like use these tools and think now you're all covered. Uh, mm -hmm. Go through the documentation uh, and you can make it look slightly better and more native because that's what we always hear from the web from from some yeah. of my friends and and the people that use native apps. Like it's never right. It's not never quite there. It's it's almost it's kind of good enough, but you can see that it's not a native app. But actually, some of this is just because people don't know what you can do. Uh, yeah, so good point. definitely check out the documentation and uh, okay. remember maskable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to add uh, like close to real time help. I know PWA Builder has a Discord uh, where mm -hmm. people are active there. And yep. out of the PWA Summit that some of the people that organize it are here, we also have a Discord um, available for questions and helping people. I pasted the link and I'll make sure that you're interested when you, we do a, a recap. Yeah, and for the Peter Builder Discord, you can get to that from our homepage too. So if you just go to peterbuilder.com, it's down in the bottom uh, right hand of the screen, I'm pretty sure you'll see a, um, a Discord link. It's amazing. Um, I just shared the Discord as well, Adriana, so uh, that will be great for people to join in. Um, it's amazing how nowadays we can get live help and the community is so eager to, before we had Stack Overflow, it worked, but you, it, was a, it took a couple of days to get answered, and now you got Discord server, you go in it, two minutes, you got someone jumping in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to ask the next question? Unmute yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so thank you guys for... Um, the points you have been making is quite amazing. So we'll be ask, we'll be looking at these questions. Let um, the new features in PWA and uh, what can we accomplish with them now that we couldn't accomplish maybe a year ago, 
some some days ago. So one that's been on top of my head is um, the window controls overlay API. So um, the Edge team at Microsoft had a big big hand in kind of uh, helping with this uh, implement this API and get it spec'd out and that kind of thing. Um, and what this API does is it's a thing that I've been asked many a time by web developers in the community, which is when I install a PWA, my users immediately know that it is not a native app because the title bar looks different from, you know, my Windows title bar or my Mac OS title yep. bar or something yep. like that. Um, so what Window Controls Overlay does is allows you to, with some slight, you know, caveats around like security things and that kind of thing, allows you to have a custom title bar. So when I say custom title bar, I mean like HTML content in the title bar of your application, oh, okay. um, buttons, um, you know, divs, any kind of section, any kind of like HTML elements that you'd want to have. You can style your title bar, this kind of thing. And it really makes a big difference. Um, so I'm a Windows user, but it also works on Mac OS. But like on Windows, for example, you can really get that kind of like you know, um, a lot of desktop applications normally have controls up at the in the top title bar. Um, and that is something that you can like do now with PWAs. And it seems like a small thing at first, but mm -hmm. when you see it working, it can really make a big difference in yeah. how the user kind of um, uh, uh, like sees your application and, and, and kind of the feel of your application. It can feel a lot more integrated into the operating system, which I think it's what people tend to be looking for when they're looking for like an application experience. Uh, yep. But yeah, window controls overlay. Amazing. Share a link if you can, Dustin, if you have any link around. Sure, and share definitely. The Next one up. Yeah, one feature that I would like to mention is the uh, the file system access API. That's also now uh, has pretty good uh, support everywhere because that really allows you to directly interface with the file system of the uh, operating system. and. That can really open up, you know, so many new possibilities for like photo editors, text editors, whatever. You can now create a document. You can straight save it straight to your file system. You can browse it. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a great feature. And also the uh, one that I think is very underused is the uh, web authentication with, with fingerprint and face recognition. Yeah. I think any website can use that right now, but it's so far it's hardly been used. But... It's a great feature, absolutely. That's the one I always show straight away when I do a PW talk. People go like, oh, this is what you can do. Yeah, done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it well, is that, that has actually been expanded upon with the pass keys uh, pass key. that you've probably seen yeah. on iOS and it's also going to Android. So I think this is definitely becoming very important in the coming years. Um, now, uh, Danny uh, just talked about the file system access API. Uh, actually, there's also the file handling uh, part of it, which you can add to your manifest. So actually, if I click on a file of a specific type, it can actually open in the PWA. Likewise, you mm, can also perfect. use the web share target. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, with, where you can share files with web share, and you can actually receive those files as well. So these are very, there's, there's kind of like a lot of APIs around file system. There's even something called like, the origin private file system, which is more like a highly optimized one file that is that is private to your origin. So it's kind of like if, if you want to write your own database or you want to write a swap storage, it's kind of advanced. But like, for instance, Photoshop needed it to be able to, to deal with ma massive images. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really nice that these are unlocking, especially these very important and uh, desktop application experiences uh, as web apps. Um, so I think that's very exciting. And that is actually being implemented also in Safari. We don't have just to say that, yeah. but we, we're, we're going to have these like the private origin, origin private file system. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think we, we're going to, you know, as in, if, I don't know if you're reading the comments, but we need to cover that up. Every, everything we're saying, people are saying, what about Safari? What about OS? What about Safari? So, you know, uh, if you do know um, if they're supported in Safari, well, too. Added as One thing is that they're adding more and more uh, all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, even things, I remember like I, I worked on the wake lock spec and they were not very happy on, on, on Twitter immediately. Their feedback from the Apple team was uh, not positive and now they're implementing. I see them working on screen orientation lock as well. Mm -hmm. So that's also seems like that's coming. So like there are more and more of these APIs. Like I just saw like yesterday in, in the preview, they're having web codec. So yeah. Mm. yeah, I guess yeah. Safari will get there. It's behind, but uh, they're definitely investing. 
And that's very positive for the web. Much agreed. On browsers real quick too, just in case you didn't know, um, Edge is Chromium based now and has been for shoot, maybe two years now at this point, maybe two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, so all of the stuff that, you know, if all the stuff that we talk about today that like is, you know, is mentioned that works in Google Chrome also works in Edge. And as I mentioned, the Edge team actually is, I think, if not the largest contributor to Chromium now outside of Google, at least is the second largest outside of Google. Um, and yeah, like the window controls overlay and file handling and stuff actually um, had a lot of support from the Edge team and that kind of thing, which is another, I think, exactly. cool like cross uh, collaboration type thing. Yeah, well, I agree with all of you. I think that web authentication, even if it's not completely new, it's like opening new ideas like pass keys. And I think that from the recent maybe year or even two years, most of the 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 new shiny things that we have in in, in the world it's uh, targeting desktop. And I think it's also the de desktop PWAs are um, are not used as, as as right now by companies as they should. So I think mm -hmm. there is also a huge opportunity. There I see a lot of PWAs out there that uh, work only on mobile because. Yeah, they didn't change how they are uh, providing their their web manifest or something like that. Um, most of the shiny features are are actually today improving the desktop experience, and I, I think that something that um, it, it excites me a lot is the mix of many of these new technologies, including WebAssembly, um, that is opening a lot of new opportunities to do things. Like for example. Do you want to use SQLite? Like, remember WebSQL? Well, you can do it now because now, thanks to WebAssembly and uh, maybe private origin file system, you can actually run directly the SQLite uh, library on your browser. And that's just one example, okay, on, on, on things that, that, that you can do. So uh, I think that the mix of many APIs is now opening a lot of new opportunities. Yeah, and at, at Intel, we're working on WebNN, like neural network. So you get basically native speed, uh, machine learning uh, in like on your client, on your, your edge device, like as close to you as possible. And, and that could also be mixed with like the origin private file system where you have your models there. So if, if you go around with your camera or do like, I don't know, maybe a model to identify my face and, and put on funny hats, you can do that all local uh, without having to go on the server. Uh, so it's going to unlock a lot of new, exciting use cases. Yeah. One thing I think is also very important or very nice for desktop apps is the window placement uh, API. It really just allows you to put different uh, screens of your, uh, your PWA on different monitors. And I think that would also be very useful maybe for like a uh, Photoshop type app. That's amazing. It's, yeah. it's great. We're covering a part of the PWA that I was personally not fully, I would, yeah, I was personally not fully aware that is not just the mobile, but actually going more, you know, desktop. Definitely uh, desktop as well, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, that's great. Yeah. Um, I will 100% investigate. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because like when I started working on and pushing Progressive Web App, it was, everyone was like, the first team that was excited about it was the, the Chrome team. And we collaborate a lot with Chrome and especially on Android to get this on like mobile apps because everyone is focused on mobile. And mm -hmm. I remember like saying, like, we should really not ignore desktop. There's so many people using uh, web on desktop. Actually, I think we have some statistics at, at uh, Intel. I think it's more than 65% is, is on, on desktop cycle, on CPU cycles. Oh, wow. It's, it's yeah. actually web. But then uh, a lot of people are using these hybrid apps, which like could be Visual Studio Code, uh, Spotify, Slack, et cetera, et cetera. And then maybe if you combine all of those, maybe you get to be a, maybe it's more than 80%. Uh, th those are some of the stats we're looking at. So it, it's really an important market to target the web. So I was mm -hmm. really happy when when the Chrome team finally decided that, well, uh, let's also push this on Chrome OS for desktop apps. Microsoft was probably the first one. So I, I remember collaborating with uh, Jeff Bertsoff from Microsoft, who used to work on PWA Builder, and, and like really trying to to add all these features to, to the manifest that they needed. I got a bit of uh, people saying, like, nah, we don't need the description, we don't need like screenshots. And, and now like like I see that everyone is implementing these and adding them in the UI. So I'm very happy we pushed for that. Uh, and I really think the future of Wears Web is especially important on desktop and especially for enterprise. Uh, you can imagine enterprise, like 
you can't install all these apps from everywhere from different stores but if you have an internet you just go to a website and use oh yeah mm -hmm. something I use all the time ads uh, install and you have it there available uh, this is really where it shines like especially enterprise apps i don't want them in an app store like they might mm -hmm. even have like top top uh, secret information right uh, they really have to run on on your intranet so there's a lot of opportunity here unfortunately mm -hmm. one of the challenges we have with the enterprise is that uh, we don't get a lot of statistics uh, a lot of admins mm -hmm. they turn off statistics from right. chrome and edge so like no we don't we don't want to send that to to these uh, to microsoft and google so we don't have like all those stats that shows that this is really big on the enterprise it might actually be yeah. Uh, I, I want to add one more capability related to like that you just installed your app and it's the and it's relatively simple to implement and it's the richer install UI and it is uh, already available on Android and for Chrome uh, desktop is coming this next release uh, Chrome 108 and it basically gives developers the ability to add screenshots and a description of their website because one, you can say trouble that we have with installable web apps is that users are not, not used to that um, mental model. So any help we can get from the developers guiding their users, telling them like, hey, you can keep this on your home screen and these are the things that you're gonna get. It's really, really useful for the whole community and the, and the whole technology. So adding a description and a screenshots to your manifest will create a bigger, more clear dialogue on that install uh, action. So check it out, Richard Install UI. Yeah, yeah, it's a crucial feature, uh, I think, to have uh, to have good uh, install UI. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely amazing how far um, this has gone in like two years, okay? So two years ago, I had yeah. something very similar, and the only thing we spoke about was, you can have an install pop-up and a service worker <laughs> uh, to use it offline, and that was it. And yeah, now yeah. there is way too much... There's too much to talk about. We could not cover all the APIs available. Uh, there's not, you know, two hours would not be enough to even just touch upon them. And and you guys are making even bigger by by not including desktop and so on and so forth. So really, really amazing to see how far it's come. Uh, really, really. Yeah, I don't know the stats for this year, but I think last year there were stats that actually the installed amount of installed Peter AQ by four, two point four times. So that's that's really amazing. Uh, there's a lot of adoption going on. Uh, and I would expect it to be similar for this year. And for developers, that's huge too, right? Because like yeah. mm -hmm. I can have the PWA, and you know, it's on. I don't even I don't even have to go to app stores if I don't want to, right? And I'm already getting people installing my app, and then I can also you know ship that same app to the app stores and get users through that. So that's like earlier I was talking about reach. I think that's like a really hidden kind of um, like huge plus like a huge capability mm -hmm. for PWAs, even if it's not like a technical thing, is that like cross-platform installability. Um, you know, I can build one app, literally one code base. There's a lot of like hybrid platforms and stuff where they'll say like you can have one code base that goes everywhere. But PWAs, you truly can have one code base that then mm -hmm. runs yeah. on Windows, yeah. Mac OS, Android, Chrome OS, Linux, um, uh, Chi OS, um, you know, all kinds of uh, smaller operating systems mm -hmm. that we wouldn't think of. All you need is a, you know, decently modern web browser and you're good to go. And I think that's really, really cool. And, and of course, use like responsive design and progressive yep. enhancement and, and all of that. Like, like something even like, like Twitter, like on my Android mm -hmm. phone, I just use the PWA. It's the same one I use on my desktop. Uh, so it's the same yeah. code base. It's quite amazing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. um, now we spoke about things that are actually have landed. So we spoke about features that are there, landed in most of the feature, most of the browser. But uh, the question now is: Do you know of anything or any new feature that is not there yet? It may have been discussed behind the scene and we're not aware of, or something that is coming up next year or in the years to come, or you hope is, it actually lands on the PWA. Hmm. Give us some insight, guys. Uh, a small one is like currently with Web App Manifest, you can only set one theme color. And uh, now people have this with dark mode and light mode. Uh, so there's actually work going on on adding that to uh, to like the manifest file. It's a bit complicated because 
uh, there's a lot of options and in the future would also love to add like translation the ability to have translations inside the manifest so so we're looking at that it's one of those things that will be coming uh, it's just taking a little bit of time to get all the details just right yeah I think it would also be nice to have something like, uh, for example, when you have an incoming call on, on an app like WhatsApp and you it, it just opens up like a uh, a phone call. I don't think you can currently you can do that with with PWAs. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm building a, a kind of web WhatsApp app right now. It's based on WebRTC. But the only thing that you can do if you want to call somebody, you have to connect somehow and you have to maybe send a push notification. But I don't know if the, if it's possible right now to to have the app opened and have it shown like an incoming call. Mm. I think that would also yeah. be great uh, to have that in the future. No, you can't. Yeah, you, you can't do that. And and one of the problems is like this is a very very powerful feature, and getting all the security details right is very difficult. Yeah. There is actually yeah. another proposal from Google now because there are a certain set of APIs that uh, they need on Chrome OS uh, in order to mm -hmm. do like like everything in web apps. And for instance, something like TCP IP sockets, like raw sockets, is very dangerous uh, because you have access yeah. to basically anything. So they're, they're looking at something which they call uh, isolated web apps. It's basically like a progressive web app, but they don't have access to the internet. So they're kind of like packaged web apps. Uh, but it's based on all the same ideas. It's based on web bundles and signed exchanges. And if you install that, so you like you gain some some powers and you lose some powers, mm -hmm. but that's gonna solve that. Maybe in the, that could be used for something like that. But it's like you you gain some, you lose some, right? Uh, yeah. it's, it's really hard because the web is it's like the long tail. You can go to any website, and if they can trick people to to approve some kind of uh, permission and then abuse you, it, it's, it's it's a real danger. Uh, so I wouldn't expect like like phone mm -hmm. calls to be the API that most people are working on right now. Um, one thing that we're working on in, at Intel is that we're actually working a lot on, on APIs for like, you, you said WebRTC. So working a lot on camera support, uh, like for instance, a native background blurring. So you don't have to mm. use WebAssembly ah, cool. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and drain your battery, <laughs> or maybe yeah, yeah. even framing or ice case correction, because you know, like right now I'm not looking into my camera. I should look like this. So you can order do that. And like really use the hardware we have available instead of doing everything in software and 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 spending that uh, very that battery life that we all care so much about um yeah a lot of things uh, happening like i also talked about neural network support very interesting personally i'm working on something called compute pressure uh that kind of like tells you how much pressure the system is under like the cpu in the future could be memory io so that you say oh yeah okay um i'm, I'm doing a bit too much my, my system might be throttling it's really bad while doing a webcast like this because I want to be able to take notes at the same time. I want to be able to share my screen. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should uh, stop doing background blurring or should uh, shut off some of the, the channels or some of the video calls. Uh, so very advanced use cases, but uh, we're looking at all of this. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, the web will and soon be able to do everything native apps can do, basically, yeah, <laughs> as long cool. as we right. can make it secure. Yeah, um, that's what we one want. Thing, yeah. For real. One thing on that I, I'm excited about recently is um, uh, widgets, so PWA widgets support. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I work at Microsoft, obviously, so I'm going to talk about this from like a Windows 11 thing. But as with everything we're talking about here, it's like a web spec, right? And it's meant to be like a cross-platform thing. Um, but if you don't know Windows 11, if you has the widgets panel, if you like slide out from the left um, or just hit the, uh, the, the like weather icon that should be in the left side of your taskbar, that will show our um, widgets panel. And um, the Edge team has been working on support uh, for PWAs to be able to have widgets there. So I, I think I saw like Patrick um, Brosse is in the comments. Um, he has a, a music player app that I saw him sharing on Twitter that is able to put a widget into the widget panel in Windows 11. So earlier we were talking about like, you know, tying your PWA into the operating system. And like on Windows, a lot of people are installing PWAs from the Microsoft Store, like the Twitter app and the Microsoft Store is a PWA. And for us, so for us, it's really important that PWAs are able to tie into all these different places in the operating system. And yeah, widgets is one. And there's like lots of really cool service worker stuff that like makes the widgets work and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's I, really cool. And it's something that like I remember from like back when I used to work at Ionic and stuff, you had to have like Cordova plugins and that kind of thing to do. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really, really cool to just be able to, you know, 
do it with just plain JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, yes. um, and be able to implement something like a widget, which is really cool. Any more on the upcoming or something you're looking forward? No, well, we can, we can mention that uh, push notifications may be coming to iOS. That, I mean, maybe it's too late, okay? But it was always, even even if not right now, maybe it's too late because sometimes we don't want push notifications anymore. <laughs> but actually, that was, that was um, a problem to actually get the PWA uh, world in a lot of businesses. So it was mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. the answer for many uh, project managers saying, no, we are not going with PWA Correct. because we don't have web push in iOS. So um, I think that even if we are not going to use it a lot, uh, it's going to be a change, okay? Mm -hmm. How some companies and some people are actually uh, seeing the PWA platform. So I think that that will change the mindset. Okay, it's like okay, it's a milestone that uh, that we will get. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely don't want push notifications for every website, but it's quite nice if you if you have like your flight is being delayed, get a push yeah, notification. Sure, sure. Or mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot, like, of, there like are a lot of corporate apps. There are a lot of use cases for corporate applications. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. And people nowadays have ability to really define this in the permission. So there are people that are willingly having push notification and not. And the fact that, the, you're right, Max, when you were going in the meeting room, they were telling you, okay, try to sell me the PWA. They say, oh, you know, you're going to have cost saving. You're going to have this. And then I'm going to get, great. Uh, do I push notification? You said no. That's it. You were out of the room. Uh, so I think this will really change a lot in those kind of discussions. Adriana? I think um, so. Yeah. So on the upcoming things, traditionally, PWA was associated with installability, as we have been talking about. And one of the things that uh, we at Chrome have been reevaluating is how should we decide that a website is installable or not, and how to handle that install prompt and these kind of uh, questions. Like, how do we modernize this and make it better for developers and for users? And one of the things that we are experimenting with is removing the service worker as a requirement for installability. And now that we have been talking about service worker a lot, it doesn't mean the service workers are not important. Like if you want any of these other features that service workers unlock, you will still need a service worker. So if you want fast loading, if you want push notifications, all these experiences, you'll still have to build a service worker. Mm -hmm. But for the basic, is my app installable or not, you won't need to implement a service worker. And this is because we realize that many apps don't implement a service worker beyond that uh, default offline experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that we'll be adding in Chrome so that developers don't have to implement an offline experience, but they'll get a default, hey, you're offline, come back later kind of page. And this is why we are experimenting with removing the service worker. We are not sure how we're going to uh, trigger the uh, before install prompt event, but uh, we are figuring out what's the best experience for developers and users to not spam, spam them, but giving them the option to control the installability. It's amazing. Yeah, cool. It's good. I think they're all nice. Um, um, well, they're all things that everyone has talked or heard about and discussed about with someone else in a conference or, or two. So it's great to hear all those coming. Um, I know that um, we touched upon very lightly, so I want to spend a couple of minutes, or maybe really just one minute on, um, I know that most of the pushback were not just on the push notification max, but actually on the OS in general. So lots of people say, I'm going to lose my OS market. 60% of my users are using OS. So what do you think is the, is the current situation with, um, with OS? And do you think that's changing anytime soon? I know that you guys were saying, you know, things are moving along. So is it going to be a Christmas present? Is it 2022 Christmas or 2025 Christmas present? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I think it's. 
Oh, no, go ahead, Danny. I'm no, sorry. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, Please, yeah, go I was ahead. just going to say one thing I always like to bring up when we're talk, when I'm talking about like Safari or iOS or Mac OS, et cetera, um, with PWAs is it's important to remember that while like some of the more advanced stuff that we're talking, like we've talked about so far may not work on Safari, like um, the private origin file system works on Safari, but like the, the regular file system access API doesn't, these kind of things. Um, while they might not work on Safari, we got to remember that, you know, web apps in general do work on Safari. So as long as you're following like progressive enhancement, um, like, you know, classic feature checking, right? Like is if navigator.geolocation, then use this API. As long as we're doing things like that, um, we can kind of future proof our PWAs, right? To where like they work in Safari now, but maybe some of the more like advanced features don't work. And maybe we have some UI to kind of explain that to users. But as Safari adds support for like the wake lock API, for example, that Chris, uh, Kenneth mentioned, um, then as long as you're doing feature checking when Safari implements that, and the cool thing is, you know, browsers, all browsers today are, are like evergreen browsers are always updating. Um, so um, yeah, you'll then, you know, get that API and all of a sudden it will, will start working. Um, so, and also on PW Builder, I should mention too, we do have experimental support for actually shipping your PWAs to the um, iOS app store. Um, Gleb, who's actually in the comments is, um, on the PW Builder team and, and and built a lot of the, the tooling that's behind that. But um, it is experimental because of a lot of the API support lagging and that kind of thing. But it is something that is possible. Yeah, so. yeah I think those are, those so are great I'm, points. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a freelancer. So that means that I'm free to speak here. So I don't work at a company <laughs> which has relationship good or bad with Apple. So uh, of course, we never know what will happen with Apple and Safari. So the, um, the vision is that it's changing. At least it's changing in terms of how fast they're doing things and things that a few years ago they were saying completely no. Now they are saying, okay, we'll see, okay? Yeah, of course, they're still not speaking too much, okay? Um, even if there are, there are new people uh, in the team, but when you ask some questions, the conversation ends at that point. Um, so that, that's, that's still there, unfortunately. But um, I think that um, Apple has a lot of pressure right now, legal pressure in many, in many countries without a direct relationship with PWAs, but uh, regarding browser, regarding the App Store. Um, that pressure, I think it's helping the PWA world, indirectly probably, but it's helping that, uh, okay, the, Apple is trying to uh, make things better. We are still in the situation that the only the only member of the Safari or the app, let's say Apple, the only the only part or the only section or department from Apple that ever used the PWA term is the legal department. Okay, in one of these legal <laughs> things, so they still don't use the the term, okay, the name, ever. Uh, so uh, maybe in a tweet, but probably criticizing it, not actually supporting it. So I'm not sure if you're going to see that, okay, uh, or not. But um, at least the idea, we, we also need to all remember that the idea, on, on, at least on mobile devices, but the idea as we have it today, actually started with Apple, okay? Yeah, so yeah. Um, Steve Shops, WWDC 2008 presented the, the only way to develop apps for, for the iPhone at that time, and that was actually a web app development, okay? And it was installed, you, you could install the app, and it was the home screen web apps, that was the name. Um, but anyway, the, the problem is that, I mean, if, if, if I look at the previous WWDC, all the sessions on Safari, mm. they didn't mention web apps, they didn't mention installability at all. So I still see that uh, it's, it's, it's um, it's like um, something um, difficult for, for them to accept, okay? That installability of web apps. Yeah, they talk about all the things in Safari, but add to the home screen does not exist for, for Safari. And uh, I would like to see the change there because it's like the elephant in the room, okay? We all know it's there, yeah. but, the, yeah. I mean, yeah. but they don't talk about that. So, yeah. and if they don't talk about that, it's always a risk for companies 
to invest in, in that in the platform because they say if they don't talk about maybe they will remove that in the future so because we don't know right so uh that's that's the current situation i'm not seeing like um safari implementing installability on mac os i don't think that that, that will happen we'll see okay but i don't think that will happen uh but at least on ios um it, it's getting better but i'm still feeling that kind of um secrecy so it's like uh mm -hmm. we don't talk about that okay but yeah. that's the we same with the native them. apps they don't talk about anything they do it's just apple so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you'll have to see when they announce something they announce it they don't talk about yeah. it before yeah. 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 there's something interesting that justin said though is because nowadays we can add a little bit on any website so you could go on a website does it work with my fingerprint yes and then you know it may be grayed out like it was with internet explorer so what is actually going to happen in the long run is that Apple user may actually have a degraded user because they have less and less of this feature. Like, upload the picture. Yeah. Oh, I can't use your file system. You know, and, and I know that many people, many of these have a native app, but I don't know you guys, but I haven't downloaded a native app in a long time because the web is no, I, mean, I can find things down there. So we'll see where it goes. It is yeah. another battle. This is the same as... Uh, uh, Maybe we should just big. keep our hopes up for more uh, browser choice on iOS so we can at least install uh, a PWA through a real version of Chrome because I, mm -hmm. I, I'm i very happy that they are uh, lately they're making quite a lot of progress. But yes, you never know if, if, if they're going to implement everything or if push notifications that's, will ever come to iOS. Yeah, that's, that's what legal will probably get into. The same thing they do with the EU about the charging. Say, that's something that they say, look, you got a monopoly. You cannot force everyone to do something. But yeah, let's say if, if they, if they so. legally are forced to enable other browsers to actually mm -hmm. implement their own engines, that can change Ooh. the, the <laughs> situation, right? So if we can have Edge, Chrome, uh, Firefox uh, directly in iOS, and they can implement their own PWA uh, mechanisms, yeah. or platforms so it, that will change the whole ecosystem because that was going to take time. Hard. Because, like, even mm. porting Chrome to iOS is not something you just do, and it's just going to no, take no, 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 that, that will take <laughs> minimum three years, two or three years. Yeah, and some managers will need to sign off on that and all of that. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's it'll take a while. Adriana, it looks like it looked like you wanted to say something, yes. I was just saying, like, uh, yes, it is great that uh, Apple is doing all these changes. It would be great to have way more changes. But, like, as we were talking, like, PWA, it's much more than installability, that it's the the area that they have been lagging. But we also have to remember, like, the things that they are doing for the web as well. PWAs would not work with an, an adaptive uh, design and with the advances that CSS have done in the past couple of years. And Apple has been pushing for that. So uh, one way or another, they have been helping. And the other thing is like, it is not a real roadblock for the web. Like you don't know how many people started using Wordle in iPhones without any problem. <laughs> And I don't know you, but I consider Wordle a huge web success. Yeah. It's not It's not a matter of like, oh, Apple has all the power. No, with just this website, they did what they wanted to do. So just perspective there. That's amazing. I think that was all good perspective, guys. As uh, you know, we in, in a way, it's amazing to have a freelancer. I think we always need to have a an unbiased freelancer that can say whatever he wants <laughs> without the company <laughs> behind. That's uh, my power. Uh, That's my superpower. <laughs> yeah. That's a great power, Max. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, it is being no more hitting with you with a stick afterward. No. And <laughs> 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 um, so time is up. Uh, the hour is actually gone. We're actually five minutes over. Um, it has, I know that we haven't actively uh, answered question, but I know that you guys have been active in the chat, have seen that, and we covered quite a few things that were discussed and asking the question. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, it's been enlightening for me to actually to all the discussion we had, and it's fantastic to see you all being in line as well. Uh, so nice to see that you all, different company, all working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, you know, the community need to say thank you to you guys for pushing this further. Yeah, great. When do well, we do part two? 
Are they right? Oh, we'll do it. Don't worry, we'll do it soon. Yeah. It's Next month. week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. Christmas present. Good. Thank you yeah. so much, guys. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.